Hey, myself Stalin. Today I'm going to talk about a problem called staircase problem. It's really simple and interesting. Let's see what is that. So we have a staircase with n steps. For this instance, we have five steps. A person is standing next to the staircase and his idea is to climb the staircase. How can you climb? You can climb just one by one to reach the top. But that's not the problem we are going to talk about. We have some conditions here. The conditions are at any time the person can take one or two steps. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay, what are we trying to achieve? So the task is to find out how many different ways are there to reach the top. That's the question. Mm -hmm. It's a counting problem. Okay, let's break down the problem into simple problem. So if you have only one step, how many different ways are there to reach the top? Here the top is only one step. So it's just one way, simple. So let's increase the problem into a little bigger. So if you have two steps in a staircase, and if you want to reach the top, the top here is two. So there are two ways. One, you just go to step one, from step one to step two, that's one way. Or from ground you can directly go to step two that's the other way so totally two way so if you have a three steps in a staircase so there are three ways let's see how it is you can go step one step two step three or you can go to step one from step one you can directly go to step three or you can go to step two directly and from step two you can go to step three so there are three ways with four steps we have five different ways. With five steps, we have eight different ways. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. What is the use of it actually, knowing this? So let's put this number in a series and see, is there any pattern? If there is no pattern, then we cannot really solve this problem. We should see some pattern, otherwise it doesn't make any sense to talk about this problem. But we are going to get a series. To find this, number 8, we just need to add 3 plus 5 and we get 8. To get 5, we just need to add 2 plus, five, 2 plus 3, that gives me 5. To get 3, I just need to add 1 plus 2, that's 3. Okay, that's interesting. If you look, this series is nothing but a Fibonacci series. Okay, this is the golden ratio. This is the like secret, of, secret of nature actually. So if you see the recurrence relation, it's t of n equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2. To find any t of n, we just need to find out the past two numbers. If you find the past two numbers, we are done. We found the current number, right? So that's the recurrence. So let's see some instances. If I wanted to find out t of 2, I just need to find out t of 1 and t of 0 and then add these two results together. That's it. I found t of 2, right? So here t of 2 is the bigger problem. t of 1 is a sub problem of t of 2. t of 0 is also a sub problem of t of 2. So we see here a property called sub problem, sub structure. So if you solve these two sub problems, that is t of 1 and t of 0, we can solve t of 2. That's the idea. That's called recurrence. That's how even nature behaves most of the time. Almost all the time, I would say, but we couldn't find out the pattern. It's getting more complex. <coughs> to find t of 3, I just need to find out t of 2 and t of 1. But if you see here, we see another property called substructure overlapping. What do I mean by substructure overlapping? When I try to compute t of 2 and t of 3, I repeat the computation t of 1 and t of 2 t of 1 again and again so it's kind of like overlapping sub problem so this is kind of bad and we need to find out how to solve this actually let's see how do we solve that let's see the uh, brute force approach to solve this particular problem so i have a staircase of uh, with 10 10 steps and i wanted to find out how many different ways are there there are three base cases. 
the staircase should not have zero steps and then we cannot call it as staircase actually so if in that case it, sh it should be zero all right if a staircase has only one step then we just written one if a staircase has two then we written two and to find out staircase of staircase of vn we just need to find out staircase of n minus one and staircase of n minus two and we just add and return to that actually that simple it is it's pretty very very simple but this is really bad because like we have seen that it has an overlapping substructure so it takes exponential time to run okay if you have if you provide 100 it takes a lot of time to uh, give you the result so that's bad so the problem is like we need to avoid or uh, mm -hmm. we need to avoid the recomputing problem overlapping we most of the time we end up in calculating recomputing the same again and again so how do we avoid it actually so so that to avoid there is a technique called dynamic programming we can use dynamic programming to store the computed result into an array so before we try to compute we go and check array hey uh, did I compute this particular stuff earlier? Yeah, if, 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 I com if I computed, please give me that actually. I really don't want it to compute again and again. That's the idea about dynamic programming. So how do you do that? So here, I just in introduced an array called memory. That's interesting. In the earlier program, we did not add that, uh, this particular array. So what I do is, I call the method staircase with the same steps. I just go here if uh, staircase has um, uh, 0 or less than 0 then we don't consider that as a staircase so we return 0 so the next statement is so I just try to see like, hey, did I compute this particular uh, staircase with the number n if as like give me that result I need to use it that's what if I did not find it I just go and try to compute that so that in this way I bring down this particular problem into order of n. So think of the exponential problem bringing down to order of n is like tremendous. So that like using dynamic programming technique we can do that. So this problem like dynamic programming with recursion is called top down approach because we start with staircase 10, 9, 8 we go from top to down. So there is other technique called bottom-up approach. So whenever we see bottom-up approach, we will be using some for loops. It's kind of iterative method. We just try to compute from staircase of 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. So whenever we try to compute from 0 to n, that's called bottom-up approach. Whenever we try to compute from 10, n to 0 or 1, it's called top-down approach. Thanks for watching.